Hey folks, welcome back to the farmhouse. This is the first episode of kind of a new series really in my new home. I moved here to Somerset about a month ago with my wife Emmy, my pregnant wife Emmy, and my little dog Jax. We've been getting settled in slowly. We've uh, basically been redecorating the entire of the inside of the house. Uh, I've not really focused much on the outside to be honest. Um, it's, it's bigger, obviously bigger house, bigger garden than my previous house by quite a bit. But uh, I'm just getting used to life here out in the country, which is where I am. I'm not in the wilderness. I am near a town. And yeah, this is my farmhouse. This is our new home, which I've worked, we've both worked incredibly hard to get to this stage in our lives. And I feel incredibly blessed to have a house like this in a location like this and to be able to do the things that I do. At the moment I'm just working on a little wood sawhorse which is part of a bigger project which I'm going to be doing here at the farmhouse. So I'm kind of creating, this is kind of a homesteading series I guess. This is not going to be every week, it's not going to kind of take over the channel. I'll still be doing my regular content of the camping, the bushcraft and uh, survival type things. But this is a little bit of insight into my home life I guess. Just uh, working away on, on various projects here at the farmhouse. I'm not going to be doing a tour all around the house MTV crib style. It's just going to be, you know, I guess if you tune into the series each week, you might see uh, see different parts of the house that way. Uh, I have a few neighbours here. I'm basically on a... In England, we have these kind of uh, country parks and manor houses. It's a very traditional thing. Not just England, actually, Britain in general. For, you know, there's these big manor houses which are kind of hundreds of years old, generally owned by earls and lords and dames and things like that, and uh, traditionally passed down through the families. Some of those families couldn't afford to keep these, because they are massive, they couldn't afford to keep these massive houses running because of the running costs are so expensive. So many of them have been given over to the National Trust, which is a big kind of, not governing body, I guess, but it's a big body, uh, a, a kind of company, Charity, I guess, is a, is a form of charity. The National Trust looks after these houses and you can go and pay entry. You can become a member and pay entry and go around these amazing houses which have incredible historical artefacts and vintage furniture that's worth a lot of money. Uh, and uh, you can see these fantastic places all around the country. Traditionally on these estates, they have various houses around. So they'll have the farmhouse, They'll have kind of the gamekeeper's lodge or the hunter's lodge, which is usually right near the entrance of the manor house by the big gates. They'll have a gardener's cottage sometimes. And that's kind of what we're at here. There's a big manor house not too far away from me. Lots of grounds, acres, hundreds of acres of grounds uh, owned by that manor house. And then there's, we live in the farmhouse. There's the cottage, which is the gardener's cottage. That's a thatched cottage, which is next door to our house. There's another house which is kind of a wane and that's uh, based on wagons, so the wagon wheels and things like that. Traditional old horse and cart at wanes they're called. Um, and there's just, yeah, a few other houses dotted around. So I'm not on my own here, uh, but I am surrounded by fields. So I've got a couple of neighbours and some fields as well, which is awesome. Yeah, getting used to life here in Somerset, which is, which is incredible. I know you guys have wanted to see the house for a while and you've wanted an update. So this farmhouse series is basically going to be a little document of what I do here at the homestead, what I do here at the farmhouse. I've got a couple more projects which I'm going to do, which I'll obviously document in this farmhouse series. I may, might film some indoor stuff as well. Um, I've been working away under my apple trees here. I've got a couple of apple trees. Lots of kind of interesting things I can do here actually. Uh, probably going to get a workshop built at some point where I can do some woodworking and uh, various kind of crafts here at home because obviously I'm going to be a dad soon guys. I've got a kid on the way. Uh, so I need to be able to have things here at home that I can do on the weeks where I might not be able to get out camping or I might not be able to get out doing the other things that I do. Uh, maybe get some chickens here as well. And um, yeah, it's going to be good fun. I'm going to finish my little sawhorse and um, yeah, maybe tell you a bit more about the house itself.
So this is a sawhorse design, simple three-legged design. It's a little bit wobbly. I'll probably shorten the legs a bit to make it a bit more stable. But three legs is easy enough. It's very simple to make. I just use the auger. This is all made from cedar, which is obviously not ideal for sawhorse. I'd rather use hardwood, but it's what I had access to at the time. Uh, so it's only going to be kind of a temporary thing. Ideally, I'd make this out of ash or something like that. Um, got the, the two V-notches up here just to help support any wood stops it slipping off I can just lock it in place and saw away you can put a single one in here as well just to make it easier but I've gone for a double one I still might make a single hole there but this is just like I say a real simple project that I'm just gonna start making I've got another few bits that I want to make before I come built go on to eventually getting the workshop done uh, which might be kind of back end of summer um, potentially early autumn. Also, it's been raining a bit, the weather, we're still about 25 degrees Celsius, we've had quite a lot of rain lately. But um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna mean that the wood's gonna expand and contract now that it's wet. So ideally I should have uh, just done all this when it's dry, which it was yesterday, it's lovely weather. But that's, you know, that's by the by. Um, it will just loosen the joints a bit and then I'll make the legs again a bit shorter and put them in when it's dry. I think it's time to head inside and get some food.